What's good everybody, my name is Valor and welcome back to Valtech Army and welcome to Bolt Action Week! Because I have four different hobby made blasters that are all bolt action and I decided to make a whole week out of it and just make it a lot more special because of that fact. And today we're taking a look at the Indra by Captain Slug. It is essentially a bolt action Caliburn with a lot of the same upgrades and options as the Caliburn because it uses a lot of the same parts. And yes, this is a very svelte little package if you like the bolt action priming mechanism. But that is a bit to its detriment because it is so compact that it can be a bit short if you're someone tall like me. Though in typical Captain Slug Blaster fashion, the hobby has already sort of addressed this and made extended stocks and all that for this blaster. I left this one sort of in its semi-stock configuration just because I want to get a feel for what the base blaster is like before I go on to build a personal one for myself. This one was a commission build for a lovely patron named Homely and I just want to be sure to get a nice video of it before I send it off to him so he can kind of get a feel for what he has coming to him in terms of the blaster. Starting up at the front, I went with the longest barrel option. I think this is the 18 inch barrel uh, for this blaster. So it is quite good in terms of performance and it is quite consistent. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have three sections of these rails because I wanted a slightly shorter sort of front end so more barrel sticks out to give it more of a snipery feel. Uh, having too much shroud can, you know, take away from that sort of look. And if you're wondering what adapter I'm using in this blaster is the Silly Butts passive magwell adapter for the Indra. All I need to do is swap out the parts from the stock ones and there you go, you have the passive magwell, which is inspired by the Caliburn passive magwell that Slug himself created. That way you can just simply take out one pin or one screw in this case, remove the adapter, and then you have your full size magwell again. It does make your darts go all the way to the back of the magwell, which can be a little bit iffy depending on the dart type and the mags you're using and stuff. But I personally haven't had too many issues firing from this uh, configuration. And I went with the sort of straight bolt handle rather than that big angled one that is uh, standard for these blasters. I think it just gives a better look. It makes it easier to store because it's a little bit closer to the side of the blaster and it is much more comfortable, at least for me, compared to the original. Now, if you notice there while I was priming, there is like two little notches. There's like that first little one there where it has a little bit of a stop. You have to make sure you really prime this thing all the way back for it to catch. Otherwise you're gonna end up like double loading or whatever and you're gonna be wasting darts. Powering this blaster is a K25 spring. Gives it a nice level of performance and it is not too heavy on the prime weight, though it is still a decently heavy prime unless you're used to it. You have to be very definite whenever you pull. You don't want to hesitate or anything. Otherwise you're going to end up short stroking it and like I said before, you're going to do double feeding or jamming. The grip on the Indra is of Captain Slug's newer style that started with the hyper, you know, the little hammer action single shot thing. And it is quite comfortable. And it allows me to do a lot of different options with uh, sort of color separation and stuff with the grip itself versus the body, the trigger guard and all that. And uh, this is quite comfortable, though the top bar here, the trigger bar, does tend to ride on the top of your thumb there. So if you're pulling, you might end up causing the trigger not to return or you might end up chafing your thumb and everything. But luckily that has been fixed by Silly Butts again with another little addition that covers that up and stuff and also makes it a lot smoother. But uh, yeah, let's go outside and let's get back out to the target range. It's time to see if we can hit the box about 60 feet away like usual. And uh, yeah. Mag number two. This one should feed a little better. Let's take that scar off, actually. See if we do any better. Definitely a bit more uh, whip on the tail of a dart.
wore out. Okay. Yeah, definitely need to find a, uh, a scar that works better for this because the, uh, the SBL scar definitely, definitely isn't doing it. Also, there's a bit of barrel wobble. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, definitely a case for wanting, you know, fresh darts and also to get a scar for this that sort of matches the uh, level of output this thing gives. I did try the SBL scar on there just to see how it would do. It did okay, uh, but I think a lot of the issues I was having was due to the worn and soft darts because some were out laying out in the sun, some were just down here, you know, constantly being reused in testing. But overall, it is still quite nice. One thing I did notice while I was firing is I did have a little bit of barrel wobble from side to side that uh, I ended up fixing by uh, tightening these screws up here, these top and bottom here. Uh, there is a second slot for a nut here for the threaded rod at the top to slot into but I'm not sure if that would fix things entirely. So definitely something to look into. I might end up putting a plastic thread locker in those holes just to make sure it doesn't come loose again because uh, this thing was sitting for a good month or so before I started using it again for the video. And now that I've built one of these for someone else and learned the sort of the secrets of it, learned how it behaves and all that, I am actually kind of optimistic to build one for myself. I definitely want to build one with a more rigid barrel shroud and everything definitely extend the stock out because this is a little bit too short for me because it's a ideally uh, and I learned this from Ed Scar like an easy way to tell if a stock is going to be about the right length for you is at a right angle with your arm does the stock touch your bicep and this one is about halfway or maybe, maybe two-thirds to my bicep so it is quite small which for certain blasters I don't mind as much for something like a CQB thing but this is more of a long you know a long range field blaster so you do want it to be a bit more slightly further out and also because that bolt has such a long travel you do want it to be a little further out from your body but i'm rambling again funny how that happens when i get to talking about blasters and something i'm passionate about what's good everybody my name is valor and welcome back to bolt action week the week where i take a look at four separate blasters that were designed by the hobby that are all bolt action and today i was wanting to show off my b variant caliber and u designed by Rupper Nutter on Thingiverse. This is basically an improved Indra in pretty much every way. This is a full set of prints to go with a regular Caliburn U hardware kit, rather than going with something else like, say, the Indra. The main reason he went with a Caliburn U set is because of the full length U channels that go through this entire blaster, making it very rigid and very durable. Like, I could bludgeon someone with this blaster if I so desired. And you might be wondering why the getup, why the realistic paint job and everything, and that's because I built this to go up against airsoft users. This blaster skirts that 300 FPS mark just so gently with worker high-end darts. And the reason I built a Nerf blaster to go against airsofters is one, I am mainly a Nerf person anyway, and two, in New Glance's game type rules, at least in terms of the airsoft based games, nerf darts actually gain armor piercing so it doesn't matter if they have a helmet or you know shoulder armor or a chest plate or something on if i hit them with this they're going down unless there's something like a synth which gains one extra armor and of course i couldn't leave things alone i designed some custom valtech side plates for the magwell and i designed a whole new bolt handle that incorporates a lot of nice little features like the spiral knurled knob there. The actual bolt handle itself is tapered down a little bit just to make it a little bit skinnier, make it a little bit nicer. And the whole finish of this blaster is sanded smooth, filled, and just made very much made to look like it's not printed because I wanted this to look appropriate when paired up with my Fallout, you know, cosplay. I'm not wearing the full setup because it would be very, very hot otherwise, which it's still quite hot right now, but this is my, uh, my synth field helmet that I did up in TPU so it's able to take a hit quite well because it's quite flexible and it goes quite well with the blaster and the LARP side of the community is a side I really enjoy especially for stuff like that something that's not too milsim or anything but still a little bit of tacticalness and everything but I really enjoy the Fallout series so it kind of blends in well with that uh, in Germany I know there are lots of uh, post-apocalyptic LARPers and everything over there. I would love to attend one of their events, but then again, travel, and also they're very hardcore. I probably wouldn't fit in that well, to be honest, because I'm more of a laid-back player. But back to the blaster, the Prime is very smooth. 
that is partially due to the fact that it just rides in a nice little channel there and also because I it wore itself in over time to become very very smooth from the just the working of the action there are actually worn in grooves on the base of the bolt handle there that are just polished completely completely glossy smooth from riding on this top edge of the channel here another little feature that I really like is the fact that I used a brass Vanguard pusher machine for me by Fetworst. Go give his store a look because he makes some very nice machined uh, products for Nerf blasters like the skinny pushers and everything and the fact that this is brass it goes really well with the uh, the army green and everything that I have going on here. The scar I'm using is just the Monkey Mods SLS nylon scar uh, with a Nightingale muzzle slapped over it. I do have a bit of Nerf barrel wrapped over it just to make it snug and everything and also to give it a little bit of orange so it's not completely completely look, looking like a you know a Barrett almost because that's what this stock is sort of modeled after is the uh, the Barrett 50 cal. I am probably going to end up making myself a uh, bearing scar for this eventually but currently I like it the way it is. Um, I do get a little bit of whirly birds with worn darts so that's something I'm gonna have to work out and get a you know, better scar for because this scar is really only for about the 200 FPS mark and going any further above that will cause some more liberates and stuff. I'm probably going to get something ported or whatever. Another feature on this blaster that I really like is the fact that it uses AR style grips. I currently just have this very compact uh, grip right here that's printed and everything. Uh, I want it to be more compact and short because if I'm laying more prone with a bipod, which is another accessory I want to add to this, uh, having a really long grip isn't the best. Though I might end up swapping this for a PSG style grip with the, the palm uh, shelf just for a more stable sort of shooting uh, grip. Even though this thing doesn't really have any recoil or anything, it's still nice to have. This is, you know, good for what I had planned for it anyway. But yeah, my trigger finger is a little bit itchy. Let's do some target shots. All right, I wanted to document my sort of target practice, testing my new rifle. Gonna have to try to get this done before a rad storm rolls in because it looks like it's going to start soon. So, got a few rounds scavenged from a local Red Rocket truss stop. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's try. That was weird. blank there. Not bad. I'm definitely going to have to get an optic for this thing if I'm going to be able to hit anything at any range. Also using those uh using those scavenged rounds isn't the best. I'm gonna have to maybe load my own, as it were. Overall not bad. Uh, I did get a lot of whirly bird shots and everything, and I did have that initial shotgun blast because I must have accidentally double loaded. But overall this thing is great. This thing is easily 
able to cover that 100 feet distance flat. Yeah, I can tell I need to do a little bit of maintenance to this blaster. Uh, definitely need to get a better scar and everything. Also, get some fresh darts for doing tests like this, but I can tell that the seal isn't quite perfect right now. It's pretty good but it could be better. But overall, I am very pleased with this blaster. It does exactly what I wanted it for. It's a, it does exactly what I built it for, and it terrorizes Airsoft users. One thing I really like is the fact that this uses an existing hardware kit, but does something completely different with it. This was released shortly after the Indra was released, and uh, yeah, it, it sort of improves upon that, even though it does look quite realistic in, uh, in silhouette. Definitely not something you want to uh, take to a public park and try to use it, like maybe if you had it printed in bright colors and everything but the way it is right now it's definitely a LARP blaster. Be sure to let me know what you think about this blaster down below and a big thank you to Ruppernutter for the design. I immediately knew that I wanted this as soon as I saw the post on Facebook. And also if you have any ideas for any sort of optics or anything I can put on here let me know because I'm thinking about getting something like a SUSAT scope or something. Another idea I had was to modify the Nerf night vision scope to have a much stronger you know infrared flashlight on it to make it look really cool it look a lot like a uh, a recon scope from fallout 4 you know big big and blocky and everything and it would look quite nice on this paired with something like a bipod but be sure to let me know down in the comments below and while you're down there be sure to like and subscribe and maybe ring the little bell if you don't want to miss any of volt action week coming up what's good everybody my name is valor and welcome back to valtech armory and this is day three of volt action week the week dedicated to hobby-made bolt-action blasters. And this is the Renfield by Shellington and MHP Arms. This is a fully 3D printed bolt-action sniper style shell ejecting blaster that uses the existing flypoint magazine and shell system. And being completely honest, it is awesome. Now you might be yelling at the screen, Valor! Shells aren't practical, you have to load your darts into the shells and shells into the magazine, but it allows for a lot more fun in terms of the loading mechanisms and also with shells you can do a double stacked magazine which means you can have pretty high capacity in a small package it also means you can do something like use a real steel style feeding mechanism in a drum style magazine so you could have even greater capacity than a double stack but you may still not want shells regardless so if that is the case ignore this video or just keep on watching because you like my beautiful face but this is a high performance bolt action springer blaster that uses the shells and stuff like i said before and it has been a lot of fun you know helping with the beta testing because this is a beta unit i actually need to update it but i don't have any more of this very nice purple glittery filament that actually glows in the dark and glows green oh and by the way if you want to help the channel out so i can actually afford something like getting some more filament and everything there is a link down to my patreon down below no pressure though uh, your viewership is more than enough this blaster is designed with a lot of interlocking shell pieces that are all sort of supported by the rails as because of all the interlocking shell pieces that this blaster feels quite sturdy once you have it all screwed together without the rails it does feel a bit flimsy and the pieces can slide around a little bit but once you have that all locked down it is nice and solid throwing up the front i got this very nice tanker style muzzle brake this is actually a muzzle brake from the winchester but since it uses the same threads i decided to throw it on here and a big tanker you know style muzzle brake on a bolt action sniper rifle does feel appropriate inside this orange barrel shroud is not the standard aluminum that comes with the kit but i'm using a standard style aluminum barrel that we use in the hobby i think it's using the shorter barrel from the swift actually and that is giving me a very nice consistent 165 fps you know generally on the underside of the barrel is a section of picatinny rail you can use this for bipods foregrips whatever on later revisions of this blaster the rail does go farther back at least of your choosing which means you can have a uh a foregrip much closer to the magwell though i do tend to just grip the magwell because it is pretty much vector shaped though it doesn't have the vector style button release on either side right above that is the ejection port and it is on both sides because this blaster is easily ambidextrous all you have to do is undo a screw here and here and then you can slide the whole stock off and that's also how you access the spring then you can pull the bolt out flip it to the other way though you may also want to switch the extractor out for the right side one if you decide to go with a left hand bolt it's very simple it's a very small piece it takes like maybe five minutes to print so despite this being a beta unit i did add my own little touch i added a custom 
knurled bolt handle. This one's slightly different from the one that comes standard in the parts now. Uh, I added some extra ridges and everything just to make it a little bit, you know, a little bit special, you know, unique for me. This is a thumb hole style grip, though there is a remix by a patron of mine, Mags Blasters, that does remove the whole thumb hole thing. So if you don't like thumb hole grips, then there you go. I have the Mr. Heath Pants special sort of extended stock, so I don't have to deal with having this bar all stretched out and everything so i have it nice and compact yet still a good length for me and the overall feel of this blaster is really good the grip is nicely shaped even though it is you know on the flat side but you're not really holding the blaster by the main grip a whole lot anyway because you're you know working the bolt and everything so your your main hand is doing more things than just holding the blaster and the overall profile of this thing is Gorgeous. I heard some people compare it to uh, a gun from Apex Legends, which I've never really played Apex Legends apart from like one time where I tried it, but my computer couldn't really run it that well. I currently have a Silver Fox 25 spring powering this blaster, which gives a very smooth prime and a good level of performance, just like my B variant caliber. But yeah, let's get a little bit of firing footage. All right, we're doing things a little bit differently today because it is currently a full on thunderstorm outside and I cannot risk getting my uh, my nice camera wet. So uh, we're doing this indoors. Uh, at the very least, you'll be able to see the action and then also the, uh, the performance I'm getting out of this specific, uh, specific build. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, though in testing earlier, I was hitting things quite accurately with this blaster. So prime it back, stick the full mag in. This is a full uh, with the 10 round extension and uh, yeah 265 265 258 265 again 260 267, 262, 265, 262, 265. There are shells going everywhere and I'm out on this specific mag. This is uh, my, one of my old Flypoint mags. You can tell because of the, uh, the follower there. <laughs> Got another mag loaded up. This is another one of my, uh, my Flypoint mags. You can see the nice Starry Night blue on there. This one's fully loaded with uh, standard AF Pro darts. Uh, I don't have any Max darts in here because those things are less common. <laughs> at least they don't have it at my local target. 258. 260. 258. I can tell I skimmed the, uh, the chronograph on that one. 262. 262 again. And again. 258. 262 and I'm out Ooh. in my opinion not bad at all I have seen a lot of the Singaporean nerfers get some of these uh, a while back because it was just too much fun and I agree because having a blaster that spit shells out every time you need to fire is a fun little addition and it also is sort of a you know, a competitive aid given the fact that, you know, if you are confident and you're enjoying yourself and you're comfortable with your blaster, you know, the whole feel, it's all mental, really. You know, most of it is how you play, but if your head's in a good space while using a blaster, then you will likely do better in a, uh, a competitive scene. That's why you see a lot of athletes hyping themselves up with some music and everything right before a game, because it helps get them in a good headspace to perform well. And that is something that I think a lot of people actually overlook with their loadout. Like I see, you know, in the first Foam Pro Tour, I saw so many Caliburns and Talonclaws and not much else. There are a couple oddballs, but 
mostly it was just the standard pump action Springer that, you know, is you know ubiquitous in this hobby right at this point. Like, I'm gonna have to replace the ubiquitous Maverick with the ubiquitous Caliburn. <laughs> and it's because of that fact that I'm a big proponent of you know building a loadout that you enjoy instead of min-maxing your way to glory, as it were. And it's blasters like this that exemplify that, because it is both fun and it performs very well. I'm sure with an even longer barrel and the right spring, I could push this thing up to 300 FPS easy. I mean, it already skirts that 260 mark just so gently. What's good everybody, my name is Valor and welcome back to Valtech Armory and welcome to the final day of Bolt Action Week. The week dedicated to all things hobby bolt action. And you know I had to save the craziest and the most recent for last because this is the Spitfire Products Ranger Sniper. And before you ask, these are all atomic filaments that I use. I use the, uh, the kind of translucent, kind of magenta purple, whatever you want to call it, the iridescent ocean carbon fiber black pet G and uh, some other orange, I forget whatever it's called. But yeah, this is a very fun build made with some very nice materials. And I just gotta tell you about it. The Ranger Sniper is basically taking the idea of what if a Mega Dart could punch through nearly anything with just spring power. And that is basically what happened with this. This thing is a monster and it really is. I agree with Walcom on this fact that this blaster will make you really want to rethink just flat FPS cap limits on blasters and ammo in games because a mega dart is a lot more mass than a standard, you know, full length dart or even a short dart. And especially if you're using, say, the AccuFake Megas, you know, the Whirlwind Megas are just a very thick, heavy, flat head. That thing's gonna leave a good bruise because this thing can hit upwards of 200 FPS with Mega Darts, which is absolutely ridiculous given the fact that, you know, like I said, it's a heavier projectile. But starting up the front, you got this very nice cage style flash hider, you know, orange tip thing, because this thing does look a bit like an actual rifle. Um, it's, I think it's based on some sort of Remington design. I could be wrong, you know. Uh, I don't know all that much about guns despite being an American, but it is threaded because it is actually part of a collet system and it houses a very nice heavy aluminum barrel that is just the right size for mega darts. There we go. And the assembly is very solid. My heavy print settings aside, this thing is rigid and solid because it has aluminum bars going through the thing secured with these very nice Chicago screws, which actually really help the look and make it a lot cleaner than just having like a uh, machine screw and a nut on the other side. And this is the first time I've ever really handled 3D printed metal because the bolt handle here is actually, I believe, 3D printed SLS uh, stainless steel it, or it's either stainless steel or aluminum. I could be wrong. But um, yeah, this thing is overbuilt to hell and back. Also, the core of this bolt is a stainless steel tube just to make sure it can handle you know the forces that are going on inside this blaster because this thing's double sprung. I forget what the larger spring is, but in the middle is a K25 and that is sort of the medium setting for this blaster. There is another spring for this blaster. This is the other spring. I can't remember the designation, like K51, K15, something like that. But this is monstrous in terms of spring power because I can barely compress this thing with one hand. It is nuts. And I am afraid to put this thing in this blaster because I don't want to break this, even though I'm pretty sure that he's done enough testing with the heavier spring to, uh, to really verify that this thing can handle it. But uh, yeah, I, I, I fear putting this into this blaster. And this is another big factor in why this blaster hits so hard. This is the plunger tube. It's as long as a caliber and plunger tube, but a lot thicker. I don't have the math on hand, but I know that thing is pushing some serious cc's of air to launch a Megadart as hard and fast as it does. And that's not even getting into the prototype half dart, you know, front receiver because this thing is a takedown system. You simply take out a screw here and push out this pin here 
and then the whole front will just pull straight off similar to a caliburn the prototype half dart you know re front receiver for this blaster hit like 400 fps on i think it might be the 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 lighter of the larger springs plus k25 i'd, I'd have to ask him yeah that is just nuts for what you can do with half darts and air volume and stuff this thing is I, I am very tempted to just run one of these in a competitive scenario. Maybe I'll run around for the foam rotor with just this blaster because it's one thing worrying about a half dart flying at you from about 100 feet away. It's another to be worrying about mega darts from 100 feet away. And that's another thing about this blaster. Normally, people would, with shields and stuff, if you have special rules about mega darts breaking shields in your game, now they gotta worry about mega darts flying at them from 100 feet away. This thing is just. I keep saying it, but it is ridiculous. It's not even ridiculous, it's redonkulous. And that's not even getting into the nice usability features of this blaster. You've got a set in insert there for a front swivel for a sling. You've got a rail here for a bipod, you know, whatever you want. You've got the extendable stock, which I keep it completely collapsed because it's the right length for me, fully collapsed. On this side, it has a Dalrin rod, which is good for supporting a bit of uh, webbing for a sling. And the top rail here is slightly canted downwards. And that is just so you don't have to crank your optics down so much for uh, for long range shots. And that's something about high powered blasters. If you're you know using a dedicated optic and you're actually using it, you often need a, uh, a tilted rail riser just so you don't have to crank your optic all the way down and then have to kind of gauge it anyway. This thing does it right out of the box and it keeps the look very nice. And before you ask, this is just a Max Striker scope that I painted matte black to kind of match the carbon fiber parts on this blaster. I think it looks nice. It fits the look of this being kind of a hunting rifle sort of thing. All right, let's talk numbers. With just this large weaker spring, it gets at about 120, 130 FPS with just mega darts, which means you could effectively run this as a long range, you know, tank buster or whatever in HVZ, but that's a very heavy specialization for something this big. You'd really have to keep it on a sling or in a backpack or, you know, keep a sidearm on your other hand that you can fire with one hand. With the, uh, with the K25 added to this, with the uh, little spacers just to get rid of any spring rattle, that pushes this thing up to, you know, 175, 180 with Whirlwind AccuFix. But with AccuStrikes, like proper AccuStrikes, it gets closer to 200, which you'll see that last shot there is 195-ish. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the Whirlwind Megas tend to fly a little bit more accurately for me at least. Uh, keep in mind my, uh, my shots were, you know, angled and everything with the weaker spring and also these are worn darts that i'm using because it's kind of hard to get you know whirlwind megas and stuff and even accufakes uh the only real place i can really find accufakes is online walmart so it's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to run something like this this blaster is way too powerful for regular mega they'll just go everywhere and that is another thought i had with this blaster is i really want some better mega darts what we really need are some mega darts with thicker foam on them or even a solid foam body with a narrower or tapered head of some sort because you have to swab the barrel on this thing fairly regularly like you know after each game or whatever because those wide dart heads will just rub on the inside of this barrel and actually cause you a lot of drag uh, one thing you can do to help prevent that a bit is by waxing your barrel which will help you get a little bit higher numbers and stuff because it adds that extra little layer of uh tightness around the dart but that rubber head and also sometimes the glue will just rub and build up on the inside of your barrel, similar to how it will build up on flywheels. Though with flywheel blasters, you actually want that on, on your flywheels because it helps give you a better grip. With this, you know, you really want a dart with a narrower head. So if there's anyone watching who has a contact with any Chinese factories, get on that. And that's also another thought with these is, I wonder how half length megas would do, you know, long range. Would they behave similarly to half length uh, short darts? Would the aerodynamics be better and stuff? I'd have to find someone who knows how to do like fluid dynamic, you know, simulations and stuff to see how different a full length versus a half length uh, mega dart would be. But if you know, be sure to test that for me and you know, maybe link it down below or send it to me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. But again, I could continue to go on about this blaster, but I'd just be parroting what others are saying at this point, because this thing is ridiculous. It's like, it is what the Centurion could have been really, because the Centurion 
has a pretty hefty, you know, plunger tube in it, but it's reverse plunger. That's a whole nother story for another day. As always, big thanks to the patrons who are scrolling on the screen right now. Let me know what you thought about Bolt Action Week down in the comments below. And while you're down there, you know, do the like, do the subscribe, do the ring little bell thing, whatever it is. Uh, my name is Valor. Thanks for watching. And that was Bolt Action Week completed. Uh, anyone who's listening right now, thank you for sticking around through the whole video. Or even if you just skip to the end, I, I still appreciate you for your ship. Uh, and it was, it was a fun ride. Uh, I am thankful that this got a decent amount of, uh, a bit of positive feedback. Even though, uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that is sort of niche in the hobby. Because the majority of people just want to run, you know, pump action springers and that. But And that's fine. It's just... I want to show some love to the, the bolt action sort of genre of blasters that had, you know, cropped up recently. And most of that is because I enjoy that sort of priming mechanism, uh, partly due to the fact that I have uh, joint damage on my left elbow and it makes running a pump action springer d quite difficult for, uh, for long stretches. I think that there's a good few people out there that are in the same boat as me, like, be it the older crowd or what have you, but being able to share my love for this style of blaster was really fun. As ever, my name is Valor. Thanks for watching.